kind of asked you about the format of the playoffs last week, but now that there's been some games played, what do you think about this three games, no aggregate format? Well, it's interesting. I think it puts uh, pressure to both teams to to have protagonism in the game, like no speculation, no no time to wait in the first game and be a little bit conservative in the first game and then the second leg when it's at home then you are a bit more aggressive like um, it, it puts a lot of pressure to try to win that specific game and one game at a time so it's good for that it's weird because now for example you see Kansas now with a good result there now they're back at home mm -hmm. it feels like now they have the advantage mm -hmm. right so um, it is interesting and we will try to to play the same way trying to go all in for this game and trying to win this specific match the uh, goal scored is much higher than the regular season average of goals in a game why do you think that is don't know like maybe maybe because of that because both teams are trying to to be more aggressive both teams are trying to you know when when you concede one or two goals then you have nothing to lose because it's not goal differential no, at right. the end yeah so yeah. you have to go uh, all in trying to equalize maybe that puts uh, you know another mindset on the players and yeah it's part of, of the format we have to adapt and and trying to to pull it off do you have any theories as to why they adopted this format for this round of the playoffs no no, 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 that's up to you guys. We just play with the rules that, that are provided, and uh, which is okay. I mean, I think we're trying to find the best way to, to put uh, all the parts in football in America uh, in the same path. I understand the needs for TV. I understand the needs for owners. They want a home game. I understand, you know, the football has its own needs, the fans, you know, needs or, or demands on spectacular games in playoffs. So I think uh, MLS is trying to, to look for the best format moving forward. And uh, I think they've done a pretty good job. I, I remember those days with Sounders when we were playing uh, just home and away, and it was good, it was spectacular. Last couple of years was one game. Mm -hmm. It was spectacular as well. Uh, now we're on this format, which is kind of a hybrid three, mm -hmm three games in the first round, then knockout uh, stages. Uh, it's, uh, it's good. We're looking our way as a league, and uh, um, I'm excited about it. Any chance that Saba is played in the Almada role on Wednesday? Yeah, it's, it's one of the possibilities. Again, uh, it's really hard to replicate exactly the, the quality that uh, uh, Thiago has. Uh, so we have to rely more on the team and playing as a team um, and uh, well we normally do that but but specifically for that area of the field where where Thiago just takes care of that area and is creative and understand the movement and the space um, but uh, yeah we'll come up with a good plan but Saba can play that role yeah he okay. could he could for okay. sure okay, how, go ahead okay. how are um, Tyler and uh, Ozzy, and will we? Is there a chance we'll see either of them on Wednesday? They're available. They're available. Probably limited minutes, but uh, they are available. It's just whether we we want to take them to the trip or not, which is what we're considering and gathering all the all the data we have of, on both of them. But uh, both of them have been training full this whole week, uh, which is a good a good thing. Uh, and they trained partial last week, so it's a, uh, it's a good sign. They are feeling great, and yeah, they're ready to go. Not having Tiago for this first game, does that change the game plan at all? Does that change kind of how y'all are going into this game? Yes, it changes. For sure, it changes. It changes the game plan. Is and how we press, how we how we occupy the spaces, how we are gonna uh, you know create the gaps that we normally try to create in the opposition shapes. Uh, at times, just just Thiago has a little bit of a a free role in certain areas to move in the pocket in central areas out wide, and from there he's very good at progressing the ball forward. Uh, so whoever is going to replace him or or play in that certain role, we have to be more specific in the ways and the patterns we have to to create. Uh, so the style won't change. I always say this, but uh, I would say that yes, the 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 structures or the way we are getting the patterns is going to change slightly for sure. What are the challenges of facing a team that kind of has the same idea in terms of being based on wanting the ball? So many similarities. How hard is it to find their weaknesses when they have such a similar mindset? 
Yeah, it's interesting. It's a good battle in terms of tactics, uh, in terms of players as well, like the characteristics of the players, some of them are pretty similar. Um, starting with, you know, the center backs, a couple guys faster, a couple guys better on the ball, uh, attacking minded uh, full backs or wing backs, uh, crafty players in the middle, good midfielders, physical but good on the ball. So it's, it's interesting, it's similar roster, similar idea, similar identity. Um, so yeah, at times when that happens, I would say it's, it's even more up to the players. It's even more up to, okay, you know, this is my individual battle here or my area, the midfield versus their midfield. Who's going to win that battle? Who's going to want it more? Who, who really wants to succeed? And at times it's about that in, in these type of games where probably you neutralize uh, each other with the tactics. And, and yeah, of course, there's always room for tactics you know, being better than the other, but uh, I would say at times when that happens, it's, it's up to the players. With Wilfred, you've had a chance to see him during his time at Montreal and, and now in Columbus. What makes him such a, a top manager in this league in your mind? I think his, uh, his identity remains. When that happens, that's where I, whether you have success or not, because let's define success, but uh, um, I, I would say that no, doesn't matter the results, the outcomes, these you are truthful to your style. I think that's where I admire as coaches, whether it's one style or the other, probably I'm more on Nancy's uh, philosophy of, of the game. I'm more on that side, but regardless of that, it doesn't matter what is your identity as a coach. I, I really admire the coaches that throughout the years they are uh, they're, uh, keeping the same identity. So I think I think that's the main thing. Of course, he's a smart, tactically coach that understands how to move the pieces and, and manipulate the space to create gaps through the middle. And I think that's uh, kind of something very particular about uh, this, uh, his teams. And uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's a very good side. The last one from me. Um, I feel like one area where this team has really improved since the league's cut break is when they don't have the ball. And I know you want the ball. And I know everything's based on having the ball. But we saw it in Cincinnati playing with him. It feels like this team has de de definitely improved how they play without the ball. And in a series like this, both teams want it. Somebody's not going to have it. How comfortable do you feel in your group without the ball? Yeah, I feel comfortable. I think uh, the aggression of the team has have changed. Not just pressing high. We normally press high on goal kicks. You know that we, we are very aggressive on goal kicks. But but even in the middle block, at times it's not just about going and being aggressive. It's the triggers. It's setting a line of confrontation from there, from that block. Can we be aggressive? The visual cues. And I think one areas where we improve a lot is once we go we go together and we go aggressive and and then of course we can be broken at any moment but but that aggression is something we're we're very proud of and in, in the recent games uh, so yeah I, i'm confident with that uh, of course uh, we need to do better in terms of not conceding high value chances which is one area that we need to we need to make sure that in playoffs we we are clear on that we're working on that we've been working on that and i think the team is ready Sir, I, I assume it's an advantage this long break that with a team like Columbus that can be very fluid in its formation and, and its tactics, it's given you as much time as you need to prepare as compared to having like a three or four day turnaround. Yes, it has pros and cons. Of course, without Thiago and facing a, a good uh, team, we had time to prepare the, the squad, but at the same time, you know, the players miss to play. The players miss, you know, they, they are ready. They are kind of anxious, like uh, they see the games happening and we're not playing until two, two more days. And so uh, we need to take care of that anxiety, make sure, making sure that uh, the, the path through playoffs, we are clear in our minds and we have, you know, all the anxiety levels low and we are just motivated and, and, uh, and looking at uh, the focus of each action we make on the field. And I think that's, that's our job as coaches is making sure that they trim the, the, the focus in their specific task and the game plan and what they have to do on the field and the specific specificity of the game that we want to play uh, in Columbus. Um, but yeah, we had time to work and, uh, and I hope we're ready. Last one for yes. me. Um, conditions are going to be a little bit different than they are today. Uh, it's supposed to be pretty cold. How do you feel like games change when you're playing in such a drastic difference than what you're used to? 
No, I, actually, I like cold. I think I think when it's better than when it is the heat or the humidity, you feel a little bit more tired. Cold is just warming up properly and making sure that the first couple passes you feel the field, you feel the ball a little bit. But after that, I think it's actually better when it is cold. Um, uh, I hope no rain, which is what what is very likely to happen. Not no raining, and after that, I think it's no issues. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.